What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis. Here we have Jared Oaks, new to the Hammer Throwies. He said this is his first year. So before we get into the video, I just want to let you guys know that if you are interested in a technical analysis of your own, go to www.gripandrip.co. If you're interested in getting one of these and you're thinking about getting one later in the season, do it now. Now is the time. If you wait until the week before your conference meet, there's not going to be enough time to make the changes. So sign up for your technical analyses uh, as soon as you can. All right, maybe get a meet or two in, see what tends to go wrong, and then hit your boy up. I'm happy to help out. So uh, also, if you want throws programming, lifting, whatever else you could possibly want from a coach online, I got you. Gripadrip.co. Go check it out. So. Into today's video, here we have Jared Oaks, as I have already said, his first year throwing hammer. Let's take a look. A little uh, different angle, camera down on the ground, but we'll make it work. Yeah, decent. Especially for year one, I didn't look that sturdy. That early. You see the left leg kind of wants to do its own thing. Patience is pretty good, all things considered. So let's break it down a little more in depth because that's the point of this, right? So in the winds, like I said, this angle is going to be a little odd because you are down on the ground, so you really can't see the same sort of uh, depth perception that you would if the camera was up and farther away uh, at like waist height or chest height. But we can make it work. I've seen hammer video from almost every angle, so I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, the winds look okay. A little shoulder, as you can see here, it's kind of like you see this tilt in the shoulders. Kind of shoulder in the hammer around. Use the hips to wind. Turn this, the hips to throw the ball forward. Let your arms go far out in front of you, reach out in front of you. Don't let that chest collapse, though, but use the, use the hips to wind. That's kind of the, you know, if you can use the hips to wind, if you can use the hips to turn, if you can use the hips to throw, that's probably going to be the best case scenario. Um, in terms of connection, if you can feel the hips working at all times in the throw, you're going to be pretty solid. Um, this left arm's kind of coming up a little bit too high, in my opinion. This has always been a weird thing for me. I don't understand why people let their left elbow extend so high up over their head and kind of cross over their face. It looks just not very stable. Um, I think maybe keep this left elbow a little bit more down and rotate the shoulders back to the right to... Uh, feel the hammer come around behind you. Um, I know Rudy Winkler is a big fan of feeling the tension behind him in the winds. Uh, I also think that is a useful thing. If you can feel 360 degrees of tension, you're going to feel 360 degrees of connection for the most part. As long as you're not the one creating it, you're letting the hammer create the tension. But this has just been a weird thing that always throws me off. It just doesn't look very stable. And uh, as you can see, you're kind of a little bit forward here and it's like uh, doesn't look very grounded, if you ask me. But so try to keep that left elbow a little bit lower. And see, so this is the weird thing is you can't see how high this left shoulder is right here. Um, but that being said, as you let the ball come through, that left shoulder does drop down, so that's cool. Um, second wind again, a little bit better. You can see that this elbow, like I said, still comes very high, and this bicep comes across in front of the face. You want to. Uh, Maybe not let that elbow rise up above the shoulder level. Um, that'll help maybe provide some stability and prevent this back from getting as extended as it is and the hips coming around and moving around as much as they are. I like the fluidity, but uh, I think this is a weird thing. Um, otherwise, as you come through on entry, if you're pretty centered. Your hips are pretty level. You can see you're shifting over and setting up that left side pretty well. You can see the shift balls on your right side. You're shifting over to the left side. You're over this left foot. That's great. But then I think you just need to wait for the hammer. All right, just a little bit more. You can see you start to rotate. You're leaning backwards here. You can see yourself go backwards. You're starting to rotate. But I think you just need to wait for the hammer a little bit more. I think this left side is just a little bit too ahead. Your head's turning just a little bit. But for the most part, it's not egregiously bad but then you can see towards the end of double support because i think perhaps this is because you aren't patient you don't let the hammer kind of get just a little bit more ahead 
when the hammer is back too far on the right side, I think this right side is going to have trouble turning. All right, so if the ball is more ahead of you, this right leg is going to be easier to turn with it. As you can see, as the ball goes left, this left leg is doing most of the work. This right foot is staying pretty stagnant. Like the right knee is trying to turn, but the right foot isn't really turning that much. You see this left foot pointed all the way to 180. The right foot's pointed back at 90 still. You kind of want to turn both feet together. You want to turn both knees together. You want to turn both hips together. You want to turn the whole body together with the hammer. So where the hammer's pointed is kind of where the feet should be pointed as a general rule. I'm not saying it's gospel. I don't do that 100%. But especially as a beginner, nobody told me that. So maybe that's why I am the way I am. Or, yeah, who knows. But either way, this left leg is opening up a little bit early. You can see yourself straightening back a little bit. And the hips aren't quite getting up into the throw. Coming off the heel turn, that's really hard because it's like you got to shift backwards onto the heel so your hips have to go back. But then as the ball goes around the left, you still need your hips to kind of come forwards towards the hands. You need to posteriorly pelvic tilt your hips, tuck your hips under, squeeze your glutes, engage your abs, and feel your hips turning with the hammer. All right, that's where the connection is. Like I said, it all comes back to the hips. I think that's probably what I'm going to title this video, the hips, the importance of the hips. Um... On this catch, though, looks okay. It just looks a little uh, too left-sided. I think you could be a little bit wider. It looks like you're trying to keep your feet tight, which I don't think is a huge deal. Uh, I've never had a problem with keeping my feet tight, so maybe that's why I say that. But at the same time, it looks like you're just, you don't have a lot of tension right here. Um, not in the sturdiest position. Your hips uh, could be a little bit more underneath you. Your knees could be a little bit more bent. Your feet could be just a little bit wider. Uh, because if your legs and feet and hips don't feel stable, the left shoulder is going to be the thing that feels the connection. If you don't feel connection from the ground, it's going to go to the shoulders. And then, so like I said, this is another weird thing where you can't really see the angle of the shoulders on the catch because the camera is so low, but, you know, we'll make it work. Um, and then it's really odd. I, know it's not, I wouldn't even say odd. This is odd for me. You know, I don't want to make you feel bad. But uh, this left heel grounds super, super early, which is like, I think could be a good thing. But at the same time, if it grounds so early, the yeah, you can see it's like a weird thing where it's like the whole body isn't turning together. It's like I don't know if you think about putting this left heel down by itself, but the left heel comes down, and like this is okay. But then from here, you'll see that it's really like just the left leg that opens up. The right, the rest of the body is kind of turning together, and this left leg is like turning, kind of turning independently. Where it's like, all right, this is together, this is together. Right foot is a little stagnant and behind. And then this left leg is just doing like its weird, crazy thing where it's like turning and you're like really focused on dorsiflexing here, which is, you know, I wouldn't say it's super important either way. Obviously, you don't want your foot to be flat on the ground, but you don't need to emphasize it that much, perhaps. And you can see a little bit of tension here in the arms as well. But the big thing here, once again, is that this right side, this right foot is not really turning. It's not really working at all in the hips. Like I said, are still kind of stagnant. They're closer. They're not as far back as they were in the previous turn. But still, you got to see these hips go around and kind of work up. And get some hip extension into the throw. Hips towards the hands. Hips towards the high point. Got to work them up into the throw. And then you can see this uh, single support is pretty smooth. I like this position a little bit better. See, now you're kind of centered between your feet. All right, you're not too far over the left. Hips are more underneath you. This is better. And you catch pretty early, but you can also catch flat-footed. All right, try to get up on the ball of the foot a little bit more. That'll help the foot turn. I know the heel feels stable, and the heel is good uh, for stability, as I've just reiterated in the same words. But if you catch on the heel, that means you're probably going to have less of a chance of this right foot turning unless you think heel to ball of the foot. If you just think heel, if you think flat-footed, this right foot's really not going to turn that well. So we'll see that as the ball goes through double support. That left heel grounds. I think this this is probably a better time for the left heel to ground. It doesn't have to be so early. You kind of want to let it come down naturally. But then you can see probably same thing. That left leg kind of does its own thing again. While the rest of the body, like your torso is doing one thing, your right leg's doing another thing, and your left leg's doing another thing. So right foot's back behind you. You can really see the difference here. Left foot's more with the ball, right foot's back behind the ball. Left side's doing all the working here. Um, and you can see this left shoulder, even from this angle, from the low angle, you can see this left shoulder is tight and it's up. And you're tightening up with the arms as the throw goes on. 
relax the arms, relax the shoulders. And like I said, if you can feel the hips working, it'll be easier to relax the arms and the shoulders. So year one, this is the stuff to really ingrain it. Um, if you can't break this habit right now, it's going to stick with you for the rest of your career and you're going to be missing out on meters at a time. So um, focus on feeling the hips and relaxing the arms. That's kind of the big thing here. Foundational stuff in the hammer throw. And then as you go on through the throw, you can see you're a little tight in the arms. They should be kind of out hammer away from the body outstretch a little bit more and then same thing hips aren't really up either still like it's better than the last turn but still uh if this position if you could hit this position on um, let's say turn one with the hips up a little bit more it'd be the hips would be up more in two and the hips might be up more in three as long as you keep thinking about the same stuff um but also i think this left leg has the tendency to straighten out a little bit too much as you can see it's a little high here and i think that's maybe because the left shoulder is tight it's pulling you up it's kind of pulling you off the ground a little bit. So like you're just barely staying on the ground. So try to keep that left shoulder down. That'll help keep you grounded. You catch a little bit better position here, but the hips compared to the angle look based on where the camera's at. Like I said, it's hard to see, but compared to the angle of the torso and the arms, the hips aren't not up enough. Or say the ball is up too much. It's your call. You can pick either one. Either way, the hips should be underneath you more towards uh the hands a little bit more and the ball should not be as high or if the ball is this high the hips need to be up more if this uh if your hips stay where they are the ball needs to be a little bit flatter kind of more like uh rather than you know 10 15 degree angle from this point of view it's got to be like 90 degrees or zero uh angles uh, angle you know flat horizontal parallel to the ground but you catch and you see your hips aren't underneath you again so um my siri just decided to pick up my voice for some reason um but you catch and there's just not much tension here there's no separation there's no tension between the hips and the upper body you're looking a little tight in the shoulders still and then what is probably going to happen here is you're going to pull this left side yeah you you see this right foot finally starting to turn and you see the hips starting to get up into the throw so it's not like you don't know what to do it's just you need to be able to do this in each turn and also be feel connected so that you don't go off balance. Um, so like it's this sort of right foot turning, hips up into the throw. Yeah, the left shoulder and the left side still go super early here. But it's this hip motion that needs to kind of happen almost every turn. You see in your hips go hip extension forward, shoulders go back. This needs to happen every single turn. All right, you kind of make yourself go off balance and hope the hammer pulls you back into balance. So you know what to do, you just got to know when to do it, I, I suppose. Um, but yeah, overall, it's about connecting the hips and controlling this left leg a little bit, waiting for the hammer a little bit more. A lot of big things to work on, but like I said, if you're just starting out, this is year one, you got a lot of time and you have, if you're coming to me, not not saying it's just me, but if you're, if you're reaching out for outside help, um, figuring these things out early on is a huge step. I didn't have this resource when I was younger, and that's kind of why I do it. Because, um, yeah, I didn't have anybody to kind of help me out the same way that I like to help you guys out. So um, it's about the foundations, man. Connection, turning the hips, relaxing the arms, getting the hips up into the throw. That's all it comes down to. Hips, hips, hips. Call me uh, chubs. It's all in the hips. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Once again, go to www.gripandrip.co if you'd like a technical analysis of your own. Jared, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. And uh, that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching. Until next time, Sean Don signing off.